Have you ever thrown branches or firewood scraps into a fire and watched them burn down to blackened chunks of charcoal? Most people stop there, thinking that's all it is, just fuel for cooking or something that will crumble and fade away. But what if I told you that those same chunks, when prepared the right way, can transform into one of the most powerful soil superfoods ever discovered? This isn't a new gardening fad. It's a technique rooted in ancient farming traditions that has been feeding soils for thousands of years. And today, I want to show you the difference between ordinary charcoal and biochar, why one can actually harm your plants while the other can revive your soil, and how you can start making and using it right in your own backyard. Let's start by clearing up a common confusion. Charcoal and biochar might look the same to the naked eye. Both are black, lightweight, and crumbly. But here's the catch. Charcoal is usually made for fuel. When you burn wood down into charcoal, it holds onto all the residues of the burning process. Store-bought charcoal briquettes are even worse. They're loaded with binders, fillers, and sometimes chemicals that can leach into your soil and harm plants. Even if you're using plain, homemade charcoal from your fire pit, it hasn't gone through the important step of charging. Raw charcoal is like a sponge with a huge appetite. If you throw it straight into your garden soil, it will actually steal nutrients from your plants instead of feeding them. That's why so many gardeners try it once, see their plants stall, and write it off as useless. Biochar, on the other hand, is what you get when charcoal is treated the right way, transformed from an empty sponge into a living reservoir of nutrients and microbes. This is the difference that makes biochar a garden superfood instead of a plant killer. So, what makes biochar so powerful? It comes down to structure. When wood is burned in low oxygen conditions, a process called pyrolysis, the cell walls of the wood remain intact, forming millions of microscopic pores. Imagine a coral reef, but underground. Each pore becomes a shelter where beneficial microbes, fungi, and even tiny soil critters can live. But here's the catch. Those pores need to be filled with life before they go into your soil. This process is called charging or inoculating biochar. When you soak biochar in compost tea, worm castings, or even a mix of manure and water, you're essentially stocking this underground hotel with life. Once placed in the soil, the biochar doesn't just sit there. It acts as a nutrient bank, slowly releasing goodness to your plants while giving soil life a permanent home. Unlike compost that eventually breaks down, biochar is stable for hundreds, even thousands of years. That means one application can continue benefiting your soil for generations. That's why ancient farmers in the Amazon used it to create terra preta, the legendary black earth that remains fertile even today. Making biochar at home is simpler than you might think. You don't need a fancy kiln, although those exist. A controlled fire pit works fine. The key is burning wood or crop waste in a way that limits oxygen so the material carbonizes instead of turning to ash. Once you have your charcoal chunks, just crush them into smaller pieces. About pea size works best. Now comes the most important step charging. You can soak your crushed biochar in worm tea, add it to your compost pile, or even let it sit in a bucket of diluted manure for a couple of weeks. The longer you allow it to soak, the richer it becomes. Once ready, mix it into your soil around plant roots, in raised beds, or even in containers. The beauty of biochar is that it doesn't wash away with rain the way chemical fertilizers do. Instead, it locks nutrients into the soil matrix, holding onto them until your plants need them. This not only boosts plant health but also cuts down on fertilizer use and prevents runoff pollution. It improves soil aeration, balances pH, and even increases water retention, perfect for gardeners facing drought or sandy soil. And here's the best part. Biochar is free. Instead of burning branches, corn stalks, or garden waste into ash, you can turn it into a resource that feeds your soil for decades. You're literally turning waste into wealth. So next time you have a pile of wood scraps or yard trimmings, don't just burn them and throw away the ash. Pause and think of what those blackened chunks could become. With just a little preparation, you can create biochar, a soil amendment so powerful it can bring tired soil back to life, cut down on fertilizer needs, and keep your garden thriving year after year. The Amish, indigenous farmers and growers across the world have long known that healthy soil is the foundation of a good harvest. Biochar is one of those timeless tools that keeps proving itself, no matter where or when it's used. 
So, the next time someone asks you the difference between charcoal and biochar, you'll know the answer. Charcoal is just burnt wood, but biochar is burnt wood turned into a living soil engine. Treat it right, and it will keep your garden fertile for generations. If you found this guide helpful, I'd love for you to subscribe to Gentle Herb, living for more timeless gardening wisdom, soil hacks, and natural growing secrets. And if you know a fellow gardener who loves experimenting with soil health, share this with them. They'll thank you when their harvest doubles.